Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to another online lecture for the Organic Chemistry Chem Complete series. And this time we are tackling the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So to give a brief setup for this reaction, most of what we have been focused on were what we would refer to as E a s reactions and that is electrophilic aromatic substitution instead of nucleophilic aromatic substitution so what do i mean by this i mean what we have seen up through this point is we really take a benzene ring we take some sort of a electrophile and when we have that electrophile the benzene will attack the electrophile and the benzene adds the electrophile to the ring. Now, why is this not considered an addition, so to speak? Because it's a substitution since the E is really replacing a hydrogen, right? There was a hydrogen present here. And if you remember at the end of these mechanisms, if I have an E here with an H, right some base of some sort is going to come grab the H and then these electrons go back to forming the aromatic ring so this is really a substitution because I am substituting an electrophile in place of a hydrogen so what does it mean if I want to do a nucleophilic aromatic substitution well in this case I'm talking about I would like to have some sort of group on here that will be a leaving group. So I'll represent that as X, usually a halogen. And then some sort of nucleophile, right? Now it's not going to be this easy, but we will talk about it in a second, right? I'd like the X to leave and the nucleophile to come in here. So the material that I would be left with would be the X leaves and I have my nucleophile that's come in. Now again, this is not the exact way that this occurs. It's not that easy. So how do we do a nucleophilic aromatic substitution? Well, there are two major requirements. So you need an aromatic ring and on that aromatic ring, what we are going to need is two things. Number one, we will need a halide. And the halide is important because the halide will make a good leaving group. And that's essential if we want to do a nucleophilic substitution. So let's get a halide on the ring. We'll use bromine. And the other thing that is absolutely essential in order to get this to really go at any appreciable rate is I need an electron withdrawing group. And that electron withdrawing group needs to be ortho, ideally, to the halogen, to the X group, the leaving group, right? So, for example, a good electron withdrawing group is NO2. Now, a lot of times we talk about avoiding electron withdrawing groups because they are deactivators, but here they are actually we're going to take advantage of them and they will help promote the substitution so here's how this is going to occur I used we were talking about minus OCH3 so let's talk about that right if I used Na plus and minus OCH3 so the methoxy is my nucleophile here if I have this nucleophile and I want to send it in to replace the BR here's what needs to happen the nucleophile itself will come into attack at the site the halogen is located at. Now when this happens, this carbon here already has four bonds. So if it's going to accept the incoming nucleophile, it needs to shift some of these electrons temporarily away from that bromine. And so what we end up with, what we see here, is my intermediate in this case it's a little bit different than what I'm used to for the electrophilic aromatic substitution so I've got my bromine that is now sharing a position with my OCH3 
and the electrons that we're going to move down and away from that bromine are now located directly underneath the NO2 group, right? So this has a minus charge right here. Now, this is very important because if this right here is an electron withdrawing group, it means it's going to attempt to withdraw electrons from the ring. So piling these extra electrons into the ring, this negative charge, it is stabilizing to place this right by an electron withdrawing group and the general dipolar flow, right? I don't know that I call it a dipole, but the general flow, the inductive effects of these electrons are headed up to the NO2. So this is stabilizing here. This is a very good thing to have this electron withdrawing group right next to the negative charge. Now, the next thing that's going to happen, okay, because this is not a horribly complex mechanism, but you do have to realize you need both of these things in order to get it to go. The bromine will leave as a good leaving group. And as the bromine leaves, again, the aromatic ring always wants to return to an aromatic state. So the lone pair of electrons will return the pi bond. And now I can regenerate that pi bond because if the leaving group is leaving, I now have the ability to form a new four bonded carbon there. And so what I end up with is the leaving group has left. The electron withdrawing group no longer needs to host those extra sets of electrons down there. And I have now substituted a nucleophile, right? So this right here, this is what belongs up here. That would be the product. And that's the whole process. So it's really the fact that you need a good leaving group, a halide of some sort, and same general premise occurs, right? So iodine is going to be the best out of the bunch, then bromine, uh, a bromine, and then a chloride would be on the lower end. We don't use fluorines because they don't make great leaving groups. But what I can do is I can substitute my halogen for some other type of nucleophile. So very, very useful because we don't have reactions that could add things like, let's say, a nitrile group directly, right? I don't have something that can directly add a methoxy group like this. So what's really nice about this is it's kind of open in terms of versatility to adding these new groups on. But the one condition, the one exception here, is I need a good EWG that is ortho to the X. So hopefully, if you're going to do a reaction like this, you have an EWG. You either want it on your compound in that location, or you have plans or a way to get rid of it afterwards. Um, but this is a very, very important reaction because it allows you to do a nucleophilic substitution instead of a... Uh, an electrophilic aromatic substitution. So very important. That pretty much wraps this up, and that wraps up most of the aromatic reactions. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you find these videos helpful. I will continue to post as much content as I can in the meantime. I'm happy to answer questions in the comments section. If you subscribe, you will get the quickest updates in terms of when I release new content. And thank you guys for learning with me. Have an awesome rest of the day, and I will see you for the next lesson. Take care.